Hello, everyone. My name is Mercy Hughes, and I'm excited to be sharing with you today. Usually, I am absolutely terrified to speak in front of groups of people, but for some reason, when I'm talking about God and what he's been doing in my life, those fears tend to fade a little bit away. One of my absolute favorite things is to hear about how God is tangibly working in someone's life in the extravagant, miraculous, and joyful ways, as well as the messy, hard, and painful ones. There is so much to be learned from God and who he is through the stories of others who love and trust him. This is one of my favorite things because it makes God so real, so powerful, and there's so much to be learned from other people. I'm not sure if you feel the same way, but I know that the work the Lord is doing in each of you can have drastic impacts on others because other stories have changed and shaped me. I've lived an entirely blessed life, I have an amazing family, the most incredible friends, an awesome job, and most importantly, I know and love Jesus. I have not faced any super traumatic life events, and I know many of you in this room have. Your stories are incredible and powerful and should be shared when you're ready. I used to think my relationship with Christ wasn't worth much because it wasn't this big revelation or story of triumph. But through several conversations with my friends, I've realized that some of the little moments are worth sharing, and they have major impact. It shows that in the mundane moments of the day-to-day -day life, there are small victories, and moments where God shows up. And that's important, right? That's worth sharing. Today, I want to share with you some of the ways that I feel God has truly worked with me, in me over the past few years specifically focusing on three major events that have matured me as a Christian. I can't tell you the impact these events have had on me without recognizing the community of those around me during that time. God placed the perfect individuals in my life at the perfect time, as I'm sure you have experienced as well. I am the version of me standing before you today because of God and the incredible people he has placed in my life. To start at the beginning of my college journey, I need to take you back to my junior year of high school. I'm just starting my college search, and so far, I have two options. And they're about 20 to 30 minutes away from here. One day, I just randomly decided that those schools were no longer going to work because they were too close to home. So I literally typed into a Google search bar, Christian colleges. I had been a part of a Young Life group in high school. I liked the idea of a Christian college. My Young Life leaders came from it, and so I thought, let me Google it. And the first thing that popped up was this school called Houghton College. I'm not sure if in this exact moment I had realized what I had just done by conducting my college search solely based off of a Google search, but I did know that I would be attending that visiting that school. From the little bit of research that I did, I could see it was in New York, so check for the box on distance, and I could see that it had a lacrosse program. At this point, I wasn't interested in playing lacrosse in college, but hey, check that box too. So it got two checks. So like any responsible adult making decisions, I called my mom and told her that we were going to be visiting this school in Western New York. Finally, it was time to visit the school. And so my parents and I drove through some remote parts of New York. And throughout the drive, I just kept thinking, God, why here? There is, this is nothing like the suburban life I had been living or used to living. But a few short hours later, I was entering into the town of Owen. I got out of the car and was immediately standing in front of the campus center. Now the parking lot at this school is quite small, like 12 spots so it wasn't that big of a distance away. But immediately, I was standing there, and instantly, without a second thought, this place felt like home. As if God was like, the search is over. You are going here. And so, I applied to just that school. No, other, no second school, no backup plan. God had 100% control over that decision. I knew I was making the right choice. I had no questions. 
absolutely no way I find that school without God's lead. It's quite small, and I'm sure only a handful of people in this room have heard of it, mostly my family and friends. I had been immersed in such a great community at Houghton from that moment on. I had mentors, friends, classmates, professors, trainers, and even teammates who pushed me to know Jesus more and live my life in a way that brought glory and honor to him first. That was my first real experience of an immersive community. They brought so much joy and carried me through some of the tougher moments throughout my college years. Sophomore year, I suffered an injury in lacrosse, wasn't extremely severe, but would require surgery the following summer. I decided to keep on playing the rest of the season. It was painful and frustrating, and ultimately it changed my relationship with lacrosse for the better. I was so focused on working the hardest and performing to the best of my ability, but this injury slowed me down. I could no longer perform the same way that I, thought, that I used to at the beginning of the season and I no longer felt like I was fulfilling my purpose on the team. During one practice where I was struggling to participate, my assistant coach called me over and said, Marissa, do you think maybe you just need to like slow down a little bit? My first instinct was like, absolutely not. Like I'm trying my best, why can't you see that? But that statement was more profound than I had thought. I had lived my entire athletic life seeking to please others and not let them down. I had put everyone before myself on that team, but somehow managed to put God at the forefront of it all. This tiny conversation began to shift in my heart, and I wanted to think, look at things differently. I truly wanted my coaches, teammates, and friends to see my heart for Jesus first, and not my heart for the sport. I wish I could say that that change in my heart really was impactful and made me never think like this again, but I fell back into my ways several times over the next few years. I could have met myself there with frustration and disappointment, like you've worked so hard to get out of that, put God first in the cross, come on. But I couldn't do it. Every time I would think like that, I would be constantly reminded about this conversation that we had had and how my perspective had to change. And it didn't just have to change, but I wanted it to change. Playing a sport in college was a privilege that so, not so many athletes receive. But playing on a team that put Jesus first was an even greater privilege. I gained the greatest friends from that experience. We truly battled together, and without it, I'm not the same me. I failed on that team more times than I succeeded. I made mistakes in my actions and in my words, and I let people down but I was always given second chances. God used that sport to bring about a significant change in me, and I'm beyond grateful for it. It showed me the true meaning of aligning my heart to Christ, even in the mundane things of life, like playing a college sport. I used to think, before this experience, that God didn't need to be at the forefront of everything I did. But he does, and he showed up for me through my coaches, teammates, and mentors. My perspective shifted from frustration and anger to one full of gratitude for the ability to even play the sport and to have the honor to view the field as an altar. During the fall semester of 2019, I was in the process of losing the one person who inspired me to attend Houghton the most, my grandmother. She lived out the purpose of community. She wasn't perfect, but she loved others well, she invited them into her home and into her heart. And she didn't just tell those she came in contact with who Jesus was, but she showed them. Losing her wisdom in my life was hard. But experiencing it alone, hours away, was even harder. To say that I may have been frustrated with God is an understatement. I constantly found myself crying out to him, why here? <laughs> why can't I just quit? and go home. My friends can attest to the anger that I carried around with me because I was so bitter that I had to be six hours away and not home for my grandmother's final days here on earth before she entered her eternal home. As I reflect on that time in my life, I needed Houghton 
and the people in it to carry me through those months, to pray with me when I did not want to pray, (laughs) to talk to me on the phone when I was driving home and back in the same weekend, and to be a safe place to land when I did get back to school. My friends and I were experiencing real life together, and several of us were going through the same issues. In some ways, this made it a little bit easier. Just a few short months later, we were being sent home from college at the beginning of the pandemic. I had unknowingly just played my last career lacrosse game, laughed with my friends in the dining hall for the final time, went to my last in-person class, and attended my last chapel. College was over, finished, just like that. I am horrible at transitions. I hate moving from one part of life into the next. Unknown scare me because I crave that control. I had trusted God so much in those college years, and it was as if when I left on March 17th, I had forgotten everything God had worked so hard to show me. I thought I deserved a proper ending. You know, the one college graduates usually get. I was so upset for my grandmother to pass away before I graduated. I was so upset that my lacrosse season ended when I was finally feeling a lot better. I was so upset that I now had to move away from the closest people and the greatest friends I had ever had. I was so upset that I wouldn't get to walk across the stage and take a bunch of pictures with my friends, and in some ways, all of that still hurts. It all ended differently than I would have planned, and ultimately, I'm better because of it. I'm better because it didn't end the way I thought it should. I grew. God shaped me and changed me in ways that, more ways that following year than he did in those four at Houghton. And I thought I was learning stuff when I was at Houghton. (laughs) For the first time in my life, I was given a glimpse into the type of community that my grandmother was so focused on creating for herself and others around her. I learned what it truly means to be a friend there. I learned how to love others well. I learned how to give God control of the small things in life, like lacrosse. I had grown into somebody that I was finally proud of. And then I was sent home. That community I had created at school was now in three different states and three different countries. Those relationships were never going to look the same again. And I hated the idea of that. Upon returning home, I was so focused on making sure I kept those relationships the same. Making sure I didn't let life get in the way, that I made sure to communicate with them with every piece of extra time that I had. This came at the cost of completely neglecting the life that I was living here, right now. I was so focused on keeping a community the same that would never look the same, and I didn't know how to cultivate those same relationships back here. I thought the community that I needed looked like people in the same phase of life I was, and I was struggling to find that back here. I had become such a different version of myself than when I left here in 2016. I knew more about who I was and who I wanted to become. And instantly, without that constant support, I fell back into my old ways, constantly looking for negatives and being quick to anger. This wasn't the same version of myself that God had worked so hard to change back at Houghton. And now, I felt like I was letting him down as well. I no longer knew how to be a friend to my friends that were now hours away. I didn't know how to live in an area that I so desperately tried to move out of. No offense, Delco. I didn't know how to be involved in the life I was living because I was too busy mourning the one I had lost. Desperate for any sort of wisdom or encouragement, I searched for a book. I seem to do my best work through Google searches, so I instantly found this book called After College, Navigating Transitions, Relationships, and Faith. Sounds exactly what I needed, right? Funny enough, I turned the book over after having received it in the mail, and the president of the college I went to 
had written a review. I, uh, I felt like if it was so impactful for her, then I had to read it too. The book talks about everything I was feeling, and suddenly, I didn't feel so alone. But this quote specifically changed my attitude about living here and working towards creating a new community. If we think all of our friends have to be in the same life stage and share all of the same interests, then we are going to miss out on what God intends. He has something rich, deep, and wonderful in store, but his plan may be entirely different from what we expect. When we surrender our picture, we open ourselves up to the endless possibilities and to the rich mosaic of God's best. I thought community was found in people the same age as me, experiencing the same things I was, and I do feel there is certainly room for that. But it was not this hard cutoff that I had been so desperately forcing it to be. I have been missing out on the life that God has for me here, right now. That doesn't mean my friendships mean any less to me. In fact, they mean the same, if not more. I've known what it looks like to have friends all over the country now. I know how to communicate better, how to make short visits meaningful, and how to support and comfort others when I can't physically be there. I'm a better friend because of this experience, and I value moments more. I miss them being around all the time, and I wish life didn't move on and seasons didn't have to end, but ultimately, they do. They have to change and look different, but that doesn't mean that you value those relationships any less. They just have new roles, and in some ways, maybe they're even a little bit more important. I'm not living in the same place most of my friends are. We aren't experiencing the same situations, but now we have more wisdom to share as we navigate life in different ways. And I'm learning that there is so much joy to be found in that. Over the past several years, I've heard people speak about community, the importance of it, the desire our hearts have to be a part of it. Paul constantly talks about community, what it looks like, and how he desires for the churches he is writing to live in it. The verse read for you today, in the verse read for you today, Paul specifically is talking to the people of Philippi. But the words he shares can guide us right here and right now. So I'll read it again for us. Philippians 2, 1 through 4. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one in mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking for, to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Paul doesn't say, make sure the church is broken up into different life stages and that's where community is found. My version of community. No, he says, by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one in mind, that is the true community. That's where it's found, solely in a common love of Jesus. While I was at Hoenn, one of our professors constantly talked about this man, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Not sure if you've heard of him, but his story is incredible. You should definitely look into it if you haven't. But he wrote this book, among several other books, which kind of reads like a letter of Paul's. So this is called Life Together by Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And in Life Together, he addresses this very point. Let me find it. Okay. Christianity means community through Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ. No Christian community is more or less than this. Whether it is a brief single encounter or daily fellowship of years, Christian community is only this. We belong to one another only through and in Jesus Christ. What does this mean? It means first 
that a Christian needs others because of Jesus Christ. It means, second, that a Christian comes to others only through Jesus Christ. And it means, third, that in Jesus Christ, we have been chosen from eternity, accepted in time, and united for eternity. Paul's life looks nothing like the Philippians at this moment. He is writing to them from jail, and they are living out in the world. At this point in his life, Paul could have given up on community because it doesn't look like it used to, and the people he's writing to aren't experiencing the same things he is. Instead, he knows the value of it. He is humbly putting his situation aside to help others, to lead them in faith. He knows the importance of community. Yes, his community now looks different, but the central focus of their shared love for Jesus is still the same. Bonhoeffer again addresses this same idea. The physical presence of other Christians is a source of incomparable joy and strength to the believer. Longingly, the imprisoned Apostle Paul calls his dearly beloved son in the faith, Timothy, to come to him in prison in the last days of his life. He would see him again and have him near. Both Paul and Bonhoeffer share several similarities. They were imprisoned for their belief in Christ and ultimately executed for it. They still created community in every situation of their life. They didn't just write about how to be in this community, but they lived it. Nothing held them back from it, not even prison or impending death. They knew they loved Jesus, and for them, that was enough. I don't know each of your stories in here or where life is leading you right now. Maybe you're in this transitional time as a parent with a child, looking at a young adult looking at the world in fear, recently married, raising a family, just starting your retirement. The list could go on forever, and it is overwhelming to accept change. But it's important to note that God isn't changing through all of it. We have all changed over the past few years. If you think about your life now and the one you were living just two short years ago, it is very much different, right? Maybe really important people are now missing from your life. Maybe you gained new additions. Maybe your life looks nothing like the way you thought it would. I am sure both Paul and Bonhoeffer didn't envision their lives going the same the way they went either. Lessons aren't learned overnight. They take time, commitment, and reflection. Sometimes we miss out on the moments initially, but I truly believe that what God has in store for us cannot be missed. I'm not sure the battles that you are fighting with yourself right now, the ones that are holding you back from being involved where you are, Maybe you think no one will accept you and that you can't be vulnerable, that no one understands what you're going through or how to help. But I truly believe that God will meet you right where he places you. He's met me here, and I'm sure countless of others in this room can tell you the same. If I learned one thing in my few short years, <laughs> it's that community is important. It has immense value and purpose. And God constantly reminds us of this throughout his scriptures. In Proverbs 27, 13, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Matthew 18, 20, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. We need community. The community that you may be searching for may not be the one you need right now. And that's okay. But the community that you're a part of now is what God has envisioned for you. You didn't enter this church community by accident, and neither did I. Whether it's your first time here today or it was years ago, there is purpose in you being part of this community. So back to the question, why here? During, one of my, during college, one of my pastor's sermons, he ended a, a sermon with this. This place and these people, God, thank you. 
What a purposeful recognition of gratitude for the place you are in right now and the people that he has placed in your life. It is not a mistake because guess what? God doesn't make those. (laughs) There is always a purpose. My challenge for you is this. Have the hard conversations. Be vulnerable. Talk to others and be engaged in your community. Attend the Bible studies and the fun events and get to know those around you. You share the same purpose in this life, to bring honor and glory to God. If Paul could find community in the hardest days of his life, we can too. Trust me, life is much easier when you lean into the place that God has placed you in. So, let's change the cry of our hearts from why here to this place, and these people, God, thank you. I can't give you all the experience of college that I had. I can no longer put all of my friends in one space and say, look how incredible they are. Look at how much God shines through them. I can't put you in my head the past few years and how long this realization has taken me. But I can share it with you. And I can tell you that it was a long process, a lot of frustration, some sadness, and even a little bit of anger. But God is still so good, and there is still so much opportunity for praise. As someone who seeks for tangible ways to see and feel God, he gave me the most tangible thing possible. The littlest, tiniest, babyest representation of heaven on earth. Sure, it had its faults, it had its setbacks, it's worldly, it's here on earth, and it can't be perfect, but I truly believe that the Lord was working in my life all four years there, and that when I stepped onto the campus for that first time and so clearly felt like this was the place for me, as I just saw a campus building, God saw all of the amazing, incredible, and hard things that were going to happen over the next few years. And he knew there was going to be no place greater for me. So it was painful to leave. But I know that I had the privilege and the honor of living in a community with others who so deeply love Jesus. And that put a spark in me. I didn't get a normal college experience, but I got a kingdom experience. And that is stored with my Father in heaven and is worth more than any experience I could have created on my own. I wrote a letter to myself at the end of the summer last year. As I truly started to be where my feet were, here and in this community, the one that I had been so desperately avoiding and missing out on. So, it goes like this. (laughs) To the junior standing at the campus center, These next four years are going to be challenging, but when you start reflecting, once it's all over, it's going to be worth every tear, every rehab session. It's gonna be worth the long drives just to get food. It's gonna be worth waking up early for practice and staying up late for homework. It's going to have eternal purpose. You, my friends, are making kingdom friendships, and there is nothing greater than storing up some treasure in heaven and not on this earth. So, make the mistakes, cry the tears, enjoy the moments, apologize to the ones you hurt, but live life to the full. Experience it all, and don't for one second think that God isn't covering you in his grace. Because there are lessons to be learned, people to love, and a God who deserves all of the credit for the person you are becoming. So for this place, right here, and for these people in this room and in this community, God, thank you.